What's happening everybody? Thanks for tuning in to TNM Downrange. So today is going to be an awesome day. One, it is opening day for early archery here in Indiana. So we're going to go deer hunting. Two, we're going to build the stand for my two steel plates. So yes, it's going to be a very, very fun and exciting day. I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you do, stay tuned because first what we're going to do is obviously I'm not deer hunting right now and it is morning time and the reason why I'm not deer hunting right now is because last night we had a big family get together big family cookout and we didn't get done until like 11 o'clock now at 11 o'clock Cheryl told me that we are gonna go visit a couple friends so I already knew I was gonna be home well past midnight and by the time we got home and everything it was like 1 o'clock 1 30 something like that and so I already knew that I had to take. The, I, it was not a long drive, but it was a decent drive to this woods. And I, I knew I was not going to make it if I woke up in the morning. My body was pretty much like, yeah, it's not happening. So I didn't go on the morning hunt, which is alright. It don't really bug me. But I'm going to go on an afternoon hunt, and I'm going to go out there and get in a little hunting hut and see if we can't, you know, snag us a deer. But anyways, so I figured since I'm not going, I'll wake up still early in the morning and we will get started on making the stand for the shooting range so I hope you guys enjoy it like I said and that's it so let's get started So here's what I got. I got three 4x4s, which I may go and get another one. And then I have four pieces of mud flap, which is about two and a half or three inches wide. So here's what my thinking is. I was going to use steel to make this target, which I thought I had enough pipe down at the shop, and I don't. So I was going to get pipe and everything, and I was like, you know what, why spend a couple hundred bucks on this steel? when I have an abundance of 4x4s at my house. So I thought, you know what, why not? If the 4x4 gets shot up, it gets shot up. I just unbolt it and I put a new 4x4 in. So here's what I'm gonna do. Then I was gonna use chain to hold the steel targets up, which I still may have to. I'm gonna see how this idea goes. But I had some used mud flaps there that I had used for other things. So I cut them in like two foot slithers the length is two foot and then it is like two and a half or three inches wide so what I'll do is, is I'll bolt them to the uh, steel targets and then I will clip them on to a um, eyelet up underneath on the 4x4 so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have two 4x4s that go like this for the legs one that runs across and then obviously two more legs on the other side so that's my thinking I don't know we'll see how it goes so I'm gonna get the chops all ready and put it up somewhere or I may do it on the floor I don't know I have saw horses but my saw horses are buried underneath a bunch of crap in the shed that I don't feel like moving so I may just do it on the floor it's not a big deal so yeah alright let's see how it goes
All right, so what I did first was I took a four by four and I took one angle and I cut it at a 20 degree angle, or it's actually, I think like 20 or 22. And then I took the other one and I cut it at a 15 degree angle because I wanted to see exactly what angle I wanted that post to go up at. So I think I'm gonna go with the 15 degree angle on the bottom of my legs. So what I'm gonna try to do is, is instead of just coming up with two legs like this and then running the four by four in the middle and just coming up like this and then bolting them through, I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come up just like this but I'm gonna make a back cut and then the four by four on top will kind of sit down on a on a lip. Now, is this a little overkill for these two 10 inch targets? Yes, probably, but if I ever add stuff in the future or whatever, I know that it will hold it and I can use it for other things while it's out there, so I think that's what I'm gonna do. Let's get her done. Alright, so now we have the four legs cut. And I don't know if you guys could see, but I used some 4x4s that were starting to split, and they had some pretty bad warpage action going on. And the reason why I chose these is because I'm going to be shooting at them. Now, yes, obviously I'm, the whole objective is to hit the steel targets, but if stuff don't, or you know, shrapnel comes over and hits the legs, and it tears them up over time, who cares? I wasn't going to use these for a project because they really weren't good 4x4s, four four, so thumbs up for thinking ahead. You know what I'm talking about? So now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to cut all my angles on my feet and then I'm going to try to do the other cut and see how that works out. So let's do it. Alright, we're switching over to the GoPro because my other battery died in my camera. So, anyways, let's get the rest of the bottom feet cut and the top pieces cut, and then we'll start clamping it together, drilling our holes, and then get some eyelets put in. Yes. Pretty sure that's where we're at, so... Two legs cut, two angles. Now, the angles are pretty much dead on. Down here is pretty much dead on. The board is a little warped, so it's not wanting to line up perfectly. But I'm not building cabinet drawers here, so it doesn't have to be perfectly precise. Um, it's just going out on the shooting range. So it'll do for now. So two legs down, two legs to go. All right, let's do the other ones. All right, so I ended up getting a phone call and that took a while. So I had to take care of some business stuff and that took a while. But I'm gonna get cleaned up here. Obviously, I have a little bit of a mess. So I'm gonna get cleaned up here, pull the Jeep in, get the garage shut down, and then we're gonna head off. So I will see you guys there. All right, so we are here, we're at the woods. I got my truck parked and I'm getting ready to grab my gear and walk into the woods. But I figured I'd give you guys a story first. So 
I have never killed a deer with my bow. Any bow I've ever had. I've never killed a deer with a bow. I've killed them with shotguns, but I've never killed one with a bow. So when I was a kid, I'd go bow hunting. I didn't go often because I didn't, I mean, I enjoyed it, but I didn't like it as much as going shotgun with a shotgun. So about five years ago, I picked my bow back up, started shooting it some, and started going. Now I didn't go a whole lot, but I did go. And then about three years ago, I got a new bow, and then I started shooting quite often. You know, during the summer, um, even during the winter, during season and everything, I just started shooting a whole lot more. And got to where I really enjoyed shooting it. A lot more than what I did when I was a kid. But I have only had two chances to ever get a deer with a bow. And one of those was the one that I am the most upset about because I missed an eight point buck. Now, even if it was a doe, I would still be upset about it. Maybe not as much, but I'd still be upset about it because this was the perfect shot. Well, perfect setup for a shot. It wasn't a perfect shot or I would have had that deer. But anyways, to give you guys a little background of what was going on, a little setting to, to visualize in your head, there was a fence row running, <coughs> excuse me, running east and west, okay? And there was another one that teed into it that ran north and south. Now, this blocked off the woods from a secluded cornfield that was kind of secluded inside this woods. Um, now, I set up about 60 or 70 yards off this fence. There was a huge trail there that they were running. And when I set my trail camera up, I had seen, you know, quite a few doe there and I had seen one buck. Well, it is a Saturday morning. It was chilly out. Um, because fall was coming on. It was chilly out and I'm sitting there and about 8.30, 9 o'clock, I hear a noise. Well, at first, I thought it was the stupid squirrels because for those of you who go deer hunting know that when you go deer hunting, that's all you see is squirrels. I mean, squirrels drive you nuts because you always think you hear something. So anyways, I'm sitting there and that's what I thought I heard. Well, I heard it getting closer and it started to sound more like a deer and not a squirrel. So I'm really focusing in, you know, and there's a little hill there, okay? So this trail comes down, goes up over the hill, and it comes straight on to my tree stand. And I'm just a few yards off this trail. So all of a sudden I see something move up around the hill. And I'm watching, and I'm watching, and then boom, antlers pop up. And I'm like, heck yeah, he's coming my way. So this buck comes up, he gets on top of the hill, he's looking around, you know, doing his thing, and he starts walking down right right to my stand well he comes out and he starts to turn and he's probably 20 to 25 yards max away from me okay and I'm like heck yes so there was a little bush there and he got down behind it and he stuck his head down and that's when I you know drew back and everything because I couldn't I there was some trees there. I couldn't get it I couldn't do it before so I drew it I did it now and I drew back and as soon as he was getting ready to pop out behind this bush I was gonna nail him so he lifts his head, starts to walk out behind the bush, still at 20, 25 yards, and I fire, and I shot right under him. And I know, I know what you're thinking, how did you miss it at 20 to 25 yards? I don't know. I think what I did was, is I did not go to my anchor point. And why I didn't go to my anchor point was because that was the first buck that I was ever gonna take with my doe, and I got super nervous and I don't know if I didn't follow through or I didn't hit my anchor point or whatever the heck I did wrong, but I missed it. <clears throat> I mean, he was he was broadside. It was a perfect setup. Like, couldn't have asked for anything better, and I freaking missed it. Hopefully today will be different. Hopefully the season will be different, and I will get a deer with my bow. So you guys got to give me some good luck, pass it on my way, to see if I can get a deer with a bow. Because that would make my season. That would just be freaking awesome so give me some good luck if you could give me some good luck so i'm gonna get out of the truck here now i'm gonna quit talking i'm gonna get my stuff packed up and i'm gonna head back to the woods get the gopro set up on my bow so if i take a shot you guys will see it and yeah that's it so wish me luck
and we'll see what we can get here. And we're back at the house. If you can tell, in that window over there, it is dark now. And do you guys want to know what I got? You want to see what I got? I'll show you what I got. I don't know if you could see that, but it was completely empty because I didn't get anything. I didn't even see anything and I didn't hear anything other than a bunch of annoying birds and a bunch of squirrels. So, like I said though, that was the first day of archery early archery and I only went out for a half day so not a big deal um, there is plenty of days left for archery and muzzleloader and shotgun so or now rifle in Indiana so anyways I hope you guys enjoyed the video I'm gonna end it right here if you enjoyed the video though let me know by smashing that thumbs up button and if you haven't subscribed already make sure you subscribe and there will be more videos coming out this week uh, I got Texas videos I gotta get up there will be more hunting videos, more shooting videos, and more of just everyday stuff videos. So, as always, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next time.